Okay, so let's continue the process of implementing our remaining steps. So the next thing that we need to do is actually to click on the login button. So I'm gonna use the same process again. I'm gonna click on the following icon. I'm gonna hover over the login button. So we've got one matching node. That X path there seems to be dynamic enough for me. So I'm just gonna copy the following locator. I'm going to go back inside this specific method that requires a user to click on the login button. I'm going to remove the system.out.print line. Then I'm going to call element by xpath, so the same process again. This time we need to actually click on the login button. Okay, so when we log into our account, so if I just fill the text fields with the email address, and in the password text field with the actual password, if I click on the login button, we need to now add an assertion to validate whether, let's say a specific element, when we log into our account, we need a unique element or something on the page so we know that we've logged in successfully. So one of the main uh, actual elements on the web page that's standing out to me is the following ask question because we know once we've logged into our account, we can then ask a question. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a validation point which will check to see whether the following button is visible in the last step. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hover over that particular button using our actual um, Firebug tool. But this specific uh, X path is doesn't seem dynamic enough for me. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use two forward slashes, select any at tag or a symbol within the whole HTML document. I'm now going to use something called contains. So basically, contains will check for any text which is visible. So what I need to do now is go text, and then I'm gonna go following, I'm gonna copy the following text here. Okay, let me go back, sorry. So if I, okay, let me do that again. So two forward slashes, then we need to use contains. Now we need to say that we want to locate text within that particular button. Now I'm going to copy and paste or type manually the actual text inside that particular button. Okay, so now what you can see here, it's found one matching node is scanning for any at tag within a whole HTML document. And if one of those at um, elements contains the following text, it will then obviously locate that particular element. And as you can see here, it's found the at tag or the particular button which has the following text ask question. So I'm gonna copy this locator. I'm gonna go back to our final step. We're gonna remove system.out.print line. I'm going to add a thread sleep of three seconds to add a little bit of a pause. Next, I'm going to create something called a web element. So a web element is like um, a variable for Selenium. So if you type on the search engine web element, Selenium web element, you'll see more details online. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a web element and then I'm going to call that particular web element let's say ask question button. So you give it a specific name. Then what I'm gonna do is go equal.driver.find and then I'm gonna say by xpath. Then I'm gonna copy and paste the xpath we've just created. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is use an assertion, but before we use the particular assertion, we need to import the web element. So we hover over, click import. Now I'm gonna use an assertion. So I'm gonna go assert dot 
and then I'm going to say assert I want to use assert equals let's use this one here okay so if we see the red line going through this particular method that is because it's deprecated as you can see from the following message so what we can do is if we go to the top of our class where we've got the following import we're just going to remove that and we're going to manually import a specific import that we need so let's look for J units and instead of selecting all we're going to select assert so we're going to import the J unit assert package manually I'm just going to scroll to the bottom of the page and now you'll see the red line going through it that's fine because we need to add the values here so the expected value is what we actually expect for example expect so when we log into our page we expect that particular let's say button to be there so what I'm going to do here is the expected value should be true because for example when we log into our account we should see that ask question button visible therefore the following value should be true that's what we expected we expecting that particular button to be visible therefore it should be true now what we need to do is the actual value here that we the actual value we're going to feed into this assertion we're going to use from our web element we've just created because what happens is we create a web element variable and that variable is created from the following by using the following x path so this x path points to that button stores it in our web element we're then using an assertion to say okay we expect that button to be visible so we're saying true is the expected value and the actual value is taken from our actual web element so it's going to be a lot easier if we see it in action so save your class you should see no uh, issues or errors let's right mouse click our feature file run as run configurations point to your feature file click run and let's see it in action okay so it's clicked on the login button it's going to enter username and password we've successfully logged into our account and as you can see the ask question button is visible okay we got a slight error let's see what the actual error is expected true but was the following here so let's have a look to see what specific message we got okay so what we need to do here is I've missed out a particular method that we need to use to our assertion so where we've got our web element uh, we've created our web element object or variable if we click dot or press type dot you'll see a list of methods which are available so what we need to do, use is we're going to use something called get displayed or sorry not get displayed is displayed and that is a boolean value so now this is will be a, a boolean value so just save that class let's run it again okay now let's go back to our framework and as you can see one scenario has passed and all six steps have uh, also passed so let's see how can we actually validate whether this assertion is working correctly so let's add let's actually change this particular x path so let's type 555 save the class let's run it one more time Okay, so we've gone to stackoverflow.com we're going to click on the login button it's going to enter an email address password click login now this is the validation point which should fail because we've altered the X path and as you can see we got the following message which is exactly what we expected six steps have been executed and one has failed if we scroll down we could see that the following X path has thrown the exception. Okay, so now let's alter our X path to the its original value. So remove the fives. 
save the class. What we can also do is now uncomment our actual commented code within the after hook. So now if we save our steps class and if we run our feature file one last time, the browser window should close once all steps have fully executed. So we've opened the browser window, we've gone to stackoverflow.com, the test script's then gonna click on the login button, it's gonna provide an email address and password, click on the login button, then it validates the ask questions button is visible, and then it's closing the browser. And as you can see, one scenario has passed and all six steps have also passed.